Luckily, everybody bought that Frank was dead and that I had disposed of his body. So Frank's funeral took place without Frank. The Mafia has a habit of organizing grand funerals for important people, where they forget the unfinished business they have with each other, or with the dead. The deceased are only shown in a good light. It's the principle of every gangster, at least at a funeral. So it happened that not only Salieri and our people made long speeches about their best friend Frank, but even Morello and other gangsters. Morello and Salieri cried on each other's shoulders. It didn't seem like they had been at each other's throats only the day before. Frank would have been spinning in his grave had he actually been dead. I guess everything turned out pretty well, only I had to think up something about Frank's family. Salieri, of course, wanted to help out his best friend's poor widow till the end of her days. I couldn't let him know that they were really resting comfortably in Europe at that moment. Tommy, it seems our problems aren't over. The prosecutor who nearly got Frank against us is digging up more dirt, and I've heard he even has witnesses. It looks like that counselor whose son you shot is sorely craving revenge. The prosecutor is a good friend of his, and if we don't nip it in the bud, they'll make big problems for us. That doesn't sound too good. What's even worse is that guy doesn't trust anyone. He has all the evidence against us in a safe at his villa. Sam and Paulie are taking care of the witnesses right now as we speak. And you've got to get that evidence, Tom. How will we get to it? Well, today we have an excellent opportunity. Mr. Prosecutor has decided to go to the theater, and nobody else will be home. That is, nobody apart from the home security, of course. But his study will be empty. His villa is in the millionaire's quarter. Mr. Prosecutor isn't exactly a poor boy. Thanks, Luigi. Your only concern is how to get in. But there'll be guards around the villa. Once inside, you should be fine. The villa will be empty. The prosecutor's office is on the first floor, and there should be a safe in the wall. For that, you'll have Salvatore with you. That's a guy who manages to open every safe in America. Once you've got all the evidence, leave before the prosecutor arrives back home. Okay, boss. Where can I find this Salvatore? He'll be waiting for you down in Hoboken on the corner next to the stadium. So you can pick him up on the way there. I don't have to tell you how important this job is to us, Tommy. Buona fortuna. I'll do my best, boss. And Tommy, if you happen to bump into the prosecutor, don't kill him. No matter what, it'll just bring us more problems. You can depend on it, boss. Hey, t -t 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 Tom. W what will it be? Vincenzo's to get a heater. Good evening, Vincenzo. Tonight I'm doing a little burglary, so I need something for a quiet little job. Tommy, a good old bat would do the trick. When you hit someone over the head from behind, they should be out cold for a while. 
to be on the safe side, take this here Colt 1911 too. I'll keep my fingers crossed, Tommy. Thanks, Vincenzo. Evening, Chief. Let's get moving. Great. So where are we going? So, you can open any safe in the country, right? Almost every one, Chief. Okay, we're here. Can you open it, Salvatore? I'll try, Chief. There you go, Chief. Be quiet and do exactly what I tell you.
Wait here. Follow me. Hello, darling. Did you have a good day today? So show me what you can do, Salvatore. Okay, Chief. It looks like we better get out fast, Salvatore. Got it, Chief. Piece of cake.
Everything's darling. fine, boss. Did you have a good day today? Now you die, you hear me? Where could he be? Ow! We'll try it with me. Ow! Ow! Ah! 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 Ow! Ah! We'll try it with me. Ow! Salvatore, open the car. I'll try, Chief. There you go, Chief. Drop me off at home. I live across the street at the stadium, a little ways from where you picked me up. where I live. Thanks a lot. I hope it'll be a little cooler next time. Today I almost crapped in my pants. I hope so too. Get some shut-eye.
Well done, boys. The last job went fine. There's no evidence or witnesses left against us. Thanks to your persuasive methods, they won't even squeak. Thanks, boss. We try to make you happy. <laughs> well, you certainly did. But today we're here for something else. Pauly has a pretty interesting proposal. Well, I met a guy from Kentucky, William Gates. Everyone knows that Kentucky makes the best homebrewed whiskey. Well, anyway, this guy almost threw up when he tried the whiskey which Morello sells here. When he gave me a drink of this stuff, they brew back there, forget about it. I won't drink anything else. So I asked him about it, right? He said it was no problem and that he could deliver me as much as I wanted. You know, I got jazzed thinking about the dough we'd make on it. Well, I ordered a truckload of it. I said to myself, if it catches on here, we can make a bigger deal later. It would certainly be a good replacement for the loss of our Canadian. I like it. Nice one. Me too. So we're gonna pick up some beautiful booze. I'm already looking forward to it. Where they hiding it? They'll meet us in the big parking garage. We have to be more careful than we were before. You'll get to the place by car with two other boys. They'll be your escort on the way back. You three pick up the truck and take it to our warehouse in Hoboken. The boys are already out in the yard waiting in the car. And bring me back a bottle so I can finally drink something decent. Count on it, boss. Get in. We're going for some medicine. Here, Tom. This might come in useful. Thanks. Wait for us here, boys. We'll be back in a little while. We drive out, follow after us. Then, we'll have a shot at the warehouse. Sure, boss.
Bill's kicked it. He won't be no magnet now. What the hell was that, Polly? Who were those hoods? How should I know? Okay, okay. Well, we can't hang around here waiting for more of them to show up. Let's get the truck and get the hell out of here. Tom, you drive. I'll follow behind in one of the other cars. Tom, where you going? We gotta take the truck.
So it looks like Merlin got in the way of things again, boss. We can't seem to shake off this bad luck. Boys, you won't believe this, but it's completely the other way around. The only one who really had bad luck this time was Morello. What? I found out who our Mr. Gates really was. And? Gates was never really from Kentucky. He was a small-time thief who stole the goods from Morello and wanted to sell them to us. Morello doesn't think that he almost stopped our deal, but that we pinched a truckload of his most expensive whiskey. I bet that bastard's happy now. Unbelievable! Well, that worked out just fine. Let's drink to that. To another success, boys. Salute. The end of Prohibition in 33. You probably weren't too happy, huh? Yeah, the end of the good old days. Yeah, not too happy. But it wasn't all bad. Eventually, I did get married to Sarah and had a daughter. It was a good time. But life went on in business. We made a huge amount of dough during Prohibition which we invested into new deals. A lot of them were legitimate. We had regular firms like construction, transport, restaurants. We ran labor unions. And of course, there was gambling, betting, the lotteries. We actually did really well. We just tried to stay out of drugs, even if it wasn't always easy. Come on, business is business, right? You're way off there. The Cosa Nostra ain't no patties at Chinaman. With drugs comes big money and even bigger problems. When someone has a problem with the cops because of drugs, he does the sensible thing. He admits it. If his family catches him, they rub him out. Drugs are taboo. So what, there's some kind of grand poobah passing judgment? Something like that. The leading families choose a boss of bosses. They sort out the big problems and set the rules of the game. So, criminals who break the law have their own courts that judge them? <laughs> That's just great. Laws aren't changeless holy words. Every country in the world has their own. It's just somebody with a lot of power applying their own will. It depends on the person whether they'll serve someone else blindly or apply their own will. Why should the Don be restrained? The Mafia prevailed through prohibition with its own laws. A handful of poor, uneducated immigrants from Sicily were stronger than all the laws, courts, and police here in the States. That took some doing. What? With murder? With the suffering they caused? Come on. You think that the Mafia just murders innocent people? The Mafia punishes those who break laws. And the majority of your laws, too. Unfortunately, we can't put anyone in jail or fine them. Everybody who comes and works for us knows what to expect if he breaks the rules. People lie and steal, and there are lots of criminals here who get unbelievable pleasure when they steal from the mob. As well as the mafiosos who get pleasure from cheating the state. And what about all the payoffs, robberies and raids, huh? Hey, the cops ain't no saints, neither. No Don encourages his men to go around harming people. And what other people do on their own isn't our concern. And as for payoffs, most people come to the Don for help and advice on their own. And they'll pay gladly for it. The Don is an esteemed person. But not every Don is like Salieri. That's the truth. There you go. Your system works, but you know why? Because you're a bunch of selfish murderers. And you only care about your own gain. All your efforts are spent ensuring that you live like pigs in shit. That's why you're so successful. You're only looking out for yourselves. We look out after everybody. A few cops have to ensure law and order for all. And that's a much harder job. That's true. But you can easily leave the Don outside your protection. He'll watch his own back. And what about you? What are you sitting here for? <laughs> 